Hey everyone. When I first moved to Morocco in the early 2000s, I kind of entered this blurred realm of fact and fantasy, and I was introduced to all kinds of people. Some of them were just the most remarkable people I've ever known. And one of them sticks out <laughs> for being the most remarkable and just all around extraordinary in a kind of bizarre inside out kind of a way. He was made quite well known, even famous, by Paul Bowles, the American writer who lived in Tangier. And his name is Mohammed Murabet. Originally, he was a fisherman by trade when Paul Bowles found him, but he was actually always what he became to be known, and that is a storyteller and a really, really great storyteller at that. I wrote about Mohammed Murabet in my book, The Caliph's House, and really became in awe by him. And so you can imagine my delight when sometime after our first meeting, he sent me a story that he had written. And it was about my grandfather, the Sardar Iqbal Ali Shah, who had lived and died in Tangier in the last days of the 1960s. It's called The Shah. It's quite short and I want to read it. The Shah by Mohammed Murabat. Along the bay, there lived in a large house surrounded by gardens, an Afghan prince. He had ended up here by chance and by the winds of time. His gate was guarded by a pair of uniformed Pashtun warriors who always accompanied him when he went into town. I used to see him in the evening when I was returning from the beach, sitting on a chaise longue, a book in hand, the guards standing tall behind him. Occasionally, we'd exchange a few words. The prince was very interested in the different varieties of fish found in our two seas. A curiosity was that in his shirt pocket was a small frog. Its skin was bluish in color. One day when I passed the villa with a good catch of fish, the Afghan beckoned me forward and he asked, Murabit, do you have any sea urchins in your basket that I may give to my lovely little frog? I haven't found any in town, he said, or in the port or anywhere in the Soko. Sea urchins, I replied. No, I haven't. There are fewer and fewer of them in these parts because the sea has just become too dirty. But I'll bring you some tomorrow if I can find any, I told him. The next day, day I searched for sea urchins all morning without being able to find any whatsoever. Eventually, I found just one in a sorry state at the bottom of a crate which had fallen off a boat. In the evening, I passed in front of the Afghan prince he nearly fainted from joy when I told him that I'd located a single sea urchin. Thank you, thank you, Murabit, he exclaimed. You have saved my life. Follow me and I'm going to show you something, he said. We entered his magnificent villa on Rue de la Plage with the guards following close behind. The prince invited me into a spacious room its floor hidden by an oriental rug. Without delay, my host placed the delicate little frog on a cushion, carefully opened the sea urchin and scooped its flesh into a dish in front of the little frog. The creature grasped the meat with its tongue. Immediately, the frog was transformed into a radiant woman covered simply by a light silk veil. 
As soon as she saw me standing there, she quickly hid herself behind a curtain. Mrabbit, may I introduce you to the princess, said the prince. She's a little shy, but you must understand that she never sees anyone except for the guards and me. I was able to get her out of the country where we had lived before in the guise of a little frog. I feed her sea urchins for dinner and she becomes human during the night. Otherwise, she has the appearance of this pretty little frog. You must help me to find at least one urchin every day. Otherwise, I'll be obliged to leave town for more fertile shores. Thank you again, Mrabbit, my dear friend. Your help is so precious to me, he said. I spent the next days searching for sea urchins, but unfortunately, they were becoming increasingly rare. When I could not bring any, on three consecutive evenings, the prince whispered in my ear, Marabet, I'm going to leave Tangier. There's nothing decent left for me here or for my dear princess. Thank you for all you have done. I would like to give you one of my guards in repayment for your loyal service and for the kindness of your heart. Farewell. Next day, the prince disappeared, leaving the villa empty. I believe he ventured eastward along the Mediterranean coast. Surely he found good quantities of sea urchins to offer to his beautiful princess in the ports and the harbours there. As for the Pashtun guard, he worked with me for a long time down at the port. He now has a shop of his own in the old town where he sells all sorts of animals, and little frogs, which he feeds with sea urchins when I find them. We drink tea and we sit around, watching them throw themselves on the tender urchin fresh flesh. But none of the little frogs has, however, as far as I know, ever been transformed into a princess. <laughs>